Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Wardog Sec, and I'm back with another video for you guys. And in today's video, we're going to continue on with the pre-security learning path inside of Try Hack Me. We're going over how the web works, HTTP in detail. Learn about how you request content from a web server using the HTTP protocol. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. Hey everybody, just a quick little blurb here. As you can see here, most people that view my channel are not subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps get me in the algorithm, helps spread the good word out there, helps bring more people and increase our glorious community here. All right, I'm all about helping out others. I know what it's like to come up in cybersecurity or even try to get into cybersecurity and not knowing where to look. I'm just having this channel up so I can help out other people. All right, that's all I got. Task number one, what is HTTP or HTTPS? HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is what's used whenever you view a website developed by Tim Berners-Lee and his team between 1989 to 1991. HTTP is the set of rules used for communicating with web servers for the transmit transmitting of web data, whether that is HTML, images, videos, etc. What is HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure? HTTPS is the secure version of HTTP. HTTPS is encrypted, so it not only stops people from seeing the data you are receiving and sending, but it also gives you assurances that you're talking to the correct web server and not something impersonating it. And we know HTTP stands for, H stands for our, um, hypertext transfer protocol here. All right, so I'm just copy and paste it down here. And HTTPS is hypertext transfer protocol secure, which is the encrypted form of it. Uh, they just want the S for it, so secure, there we go. On the mock web page, on the right, there is an issue. Once you find found it, click on it. What's the challenge flag? So let's go ahead and take a look here. And let's see here. Well, there we go. It's not secure. All right, it's using HTTP. Uh, it's got a certificate error, apparently. And let's go ahead and plug this in there. All right. Go ahead and close out of here. And let's continue on to the next task here. Task number two, requests and responses. And it says, when we access the website, your browser will need to make requests to a web server for assets such as HTML images and download the responses. Before that, you need to tell the browser specifically how and where to access these resources. This is where URLs will help. What is a URL? Uniform Resource Locator. If you've used the internet, you've used a URL before. A URL is predominantly an instruction on how to access a resource on the internet. The below image shows what a URL looks like with all of its features. It does not use all features in every request. Right? Scheme, HTTP, user, host domain, you got the port, path, fragment, uh, or sorry, query string and fragment at the end. Scheme, this instructs on what protocol to use for the for accessing the resource such as HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, user. Some services require authentication to log in. You can put a username and password into the URL to log in. Host, the, the domain name of IP address of the server you wish to access, port, the port that you are going to connect to, usually 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS, but this can be hosted on any port between one to 65,535. Path, the file name or location of the resource you are trying to access. Query string, extra bits of information that can be sent to the request path. For example, forward slash blog, question mark ID equal one, will tell the blog path that you wish to receive the blog article with the ID of one. Fragment, this is a reference to a location on the actual web requested uh, page. This is commonly used for pages with long content and can have a certain part of the page directly linked to it. So it is viewable to the user as soon as they access the page. Making requests, it's possible to make a request to a web server 
with just one line get forward slash http forward slash one dot one and there's an infographic of what they're explaining here the request method the http protocol version right we just saw up above the page being requested is being sent back But for a much richer web experience, you'll need to send other data as well. This other data is sent in what is called headers, where headers contain extra information to give to the web server you're communicating with, but we'll go more into this in the header task. Example, as highlighted or outlined here, you've got the get forward slash yada yada host, tryhackme.com, use agent, Firefox, and refer, tryhackme.com. To break down each line of this request, line number one, the request is sending the get method more on this in the HTTP methods task request to home page with forward slash and telling the web server we are using HTTP protocol with version 1.1 .1, line number two we tell the web server we want the website trackme.com line number three we tell the web server we are using the Firefox version 86 browser line number four we are telling the web server that the web page that referred us to this one is HTTPS trackme.com and line number five, HTTP, re HTTP requests always end with a blank line to inform the web server that the request has finished. And here's an example of the response. You can see here yourself. Um, let's get down to what it's talking about. Line number one, HTTP 1 1.1 is the version of the HTTP protocol the server is using and then followed by the HTTP status code, in this case 200 OK, which tells us that the request has completed successfully. Line two, this tells us the web server software and version number, line number three, date, I mean self-explanatory time, time zone. Four, the content type header tells us, uh, tells the client what sort of information is going to be sent, such as HTML, images, videos, PDF, etc. Right, we got that right here, content length. Content length tells the client how long the response is. This way we can confirm no data is missing. And then line number six, HTTP response contains a blank line to confirm the end of HTTP response. Line seven through 14, the information that has been requested in this instance, the home page, right? And let's see here. What HTTP protocol is being used in the above example? And we saw that's gonna be the get request, right? So I'm gonna copy and paste this out of here. Got it down here, and that should be it. Okay, oh, sorry, just wants this, this 1.1 there. There we go. What, what response header tells the browser how much data to expect? And that was how much data to expect, right? So that would be the content length. So I'm gonna copy and paste it. All right. And continue on to task number three here. HTTP methods. HTTP methods are a way for the client to show their intended action when making an HTTP request. There are a lot of HTTP methods, but we'll cover the most common ones, although mostly you'll deal with the get and post method. Get request, this is used for getting information from a web server. Post request, this is used for submitting data to the web server and potentially creating new records. Put request, this is used for submitting data to a web server to update information. Delete request, this is used for deleting information slash records from a web server. What method would be used to create a new account? This is going to be a post request. What method would be used to update your email address is going to be put, updating records. What method would be used to remove a picture? You've uploaded your account, it's going to be delete. And what method would be used to view a news article? It's going to be get. Go. All right, task number four here, HTTP status codes. And there's a lot of stuff here. HTTP status codes. In a previous task, you learned that when a HTTP server responds, the first line always contains a status code informing the client of the outcome of the request and also potentially how to handle it. These status codes can be broken down into five different ranges. Get 100 to 199 information response. All right, I'm not gonna read all of this here. I'm just gonna read um, the first part here. Uh, you guys can check out the room or pause the video to read this yourselves. Uh, 200 to 299 success, 300 to 399 redirections, 400 to 499 client errors, 500 to 599 server errors, 
and common HTTP status codes. There are a lot of different HTTP status codes, and that's not including the fact that applications can even define their own. We'll go over the most common HTTP stat responses you are likely to come across here. You got 200 okay, 201 created, 301 moved permanently, 302 found, 400 is bad request, 401 not authorized, 403 forbidden, 405 method not allowed, 404 page not found, my favorite, 404 errors, 500 internal service error, 503 service unavailable. Click the view site button on the right to see what some of these HTTP status messages look like the browser. It says what response code might you receive if you created a new user on a um, or blog post article. Okay, I just went through and just went ahead and do this to make it a lot easier. The first one's going to be 201, which is the um, created, right? Because you created a new user or blog post, right? So it makes sense. What response code might you receive if you try to access a web page? I'm pretty sure many of us have experienced this one before. It's going to be 404 error here and have this pulled up so you can see what it looks like you're not found, right? I'm sure everyone on this watching this video has seen this before somewhere. What response code might you receive if the web server cannot access its database and the application crashes? Well, that's going to be a 503 error. And let's see what that looks like. Service unavailable, right? And the last one is what response code might you receive if you try to edit your profile without logging first? Well, that's going to be a permissions issue, right? Authorization uh, not allowed, right? Not authorized. There you go. And let's continue on to task number five here. Talk about headers. Headers are additional bits of data you can send to the web server when making requests. Although no headers are strictly required when making an HTTP request, you'll find it difficult to view a website properly. Common request headers. These are headers that are sent from the client, usually your browser, to the server. Host. Some web servers host multiple websites, so by providing the host headers, you can tell it which one you require. Otherwise, you'll just receive the default website for the server. User agent. This is your browser software and version number. Tell the web browser your browser software helps it format and the website properly for your browser and also some elements of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS are only available in certain browsers. What about Internet Explorer? What happened to that, right? Just kidding. Anyway, uh, content length. When sending data to a web server, such as in a form, the content length tells the web server how much data to expect in the web request. This way, the server can assure it's not missing any data. Accept encoding tells the web server what types of compression methods the browser supports so the data can be made sw smaller for transmitting over the internet. Cookie data sent to the server to help remember your information. See cookies, task for more information, common response headers. These are the headers that are returned to the client from the server after request. Set cookie information to store, which gets sent back to the server on each request. See cookies task for more information. Cache control, how long to store the content uh, of the response and the browser's cache before it requested again. Content type, this tells the client what type of data is being returned, i.e. HTML, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, PDF, video, etc. Using the content type header, the browser then knows how to process the data. Uh, content encoding, this method has been used to compress the data to make it smaller when sending it over the internet. All right, let's take a look at these questions here. What header tells the web browser what browser it's being used? Remember that was the user agent here. So copy and paste that down here. Here we go. What header tells the browser what type of data is being returned? All right, so that's gonna be this content type. All right, and the last one here says, what header tells the web server which website is being requested? And that should be the host. There we go. Awesome, so let's go ahead and continue on to task number six, where we're talking about uh, cookies. You've probably heard of cookies before. They're just a small piece of data that is stored on your computer. Cookies are saved when you received a set cookie header from a web server. Then every further request you make, you'll send the cookie back to the web server because HTTP is stateless. Doesn't keep track of your cookie, your previous requests. Uh, cookies can be used to remind the web server who you are, some personal settings for the website, or whether you've been to the website before. Let's take a look at an example of the HTTP request here. And be sure to pause the video and check this out yourself here. We're going to continue on. 
Uh, cookies can be used for many purposes, but are most commonly used for website authentication. The cookie value won't usually be a, a clear text string where you can see the password, but a token, unique secret code that isn't easily human guessable. Hopefully that's the case. I mean, as we know, there's a lot of insecure websites still out there these days. Viewing your cookies. You can easily view what cookies your browser is sending to a website by using the developer tools in your browser. If you're not sure how to get to your developer tools in your browser, click the view site button at the top of this task for how to guide. Once you have developer tools open, click on the network tab. This tab will show you a list of all resources your browser has requested. You can click on each one to receive a detailed breakdown of the request and response. If your browser sent a cookie, you will see these on the cookies tab request. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, site here they got up. And let's see, accessing developer tools. Which header is used to save cookies to your computer? The set cookie is the header that you use as we saw up above here, right? Cookies are saved when you receive a set cookie header from a web server. And you can take a look at this little simulation they got open here has um, instructions on where to look for developer tools, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's continue on here to task number seven here. Making requests. Click the view site button on the right. This is an emulator for making demo HTTP requests. Using what you've learned from the above task, you can use it to complete the questions below. All right, let's go ahead and click this here. It says make a get request to for its last room. Okay, just gives you little instructions. Change your HTTP request method. Uh, change URL, update, yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's get on to it. Make a get request to room. So let's do it here. here. All right, so get, awesome. There's the first flag here. All right, so let's make a get request to forward slash blog. So let's go ahead and do that here. Forward slash blog, hit to go. And it says, using the gear and the icon, Oh, to I, okay. Key value equals one. That's going to be ID here. So go ahead and save that in here. All right, now let's try it again. There we go. Block article one. There's the flag here. It's also there at the bottom, right? For the, like, this is what it looks like in like developer tools. And make a delete request to user one. Let's see what we do here. All right, so user and then one. All right, let's change this down to delete, and we're gonna hit go. User has been deleted, uh-oh. All right, copy that. And next one's gonna be a put request. Make a put request to user two. Okay, so let's go and change this real quick, and then use put, and then hit go. And I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here. All right, <laughs> admin, oh, username to uh, admin. So I'm assuming it's what's supposed to be admin. Let's try this. Yep, there we go. Copy this. Oops, okay, there we go. And post the username of THM and a password of lets me in to log in. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. Post. Let's see what this looks like first. Okay, yeah. All right, oh, it has it right here for you. All right, ID equals one, username and admin. So I'm just gonna copy ID equals um, THM and the name equals admin, or username's admin. All right, let's go ahead and do this real quick. So ID is going to be, uh, oh, sorry, it's gonna be username. It's already set. I'm just gonna change it here. Delete, delete. All right. Password. 
is going to be let me in save that and then this is going to be the username if i can spell it correctly it's going to be uh thm there we go and go there we go awesome so that wraps it up folks it's the last flag now if you enjoyed this video found it of value got getting information out of it be sure to hit that like button if you're new here please consider please consider hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell hit the comment section below with questions thoughts opinions etc etc all that good stuff as always thank you for watching have a good day and i will see you later